Hola amigos, today we're going to talk building envelope. We're in the garage space of our Highland Heights ATX project here in Travis Heights. And behind me you can see the true building envelope of this home. This is on the inside of this garage right here, this wall right here, this wall right here. And then this wall is actually going to be considered, I'm going to term this as a secondary building envelope right here, because this is not actually a wall which is a budding condition space. This is just a regular old garage that is not conditioned. Therefore, this is not part of our true building envelope. True building envelope defi definition is going to be what is wrapping my condition space. That's what I'm going to call the true building envelope. So as we constructed this garage and a lot of the vertical walls on this garage, we had to think about some various control layers. On the outside of the garage, we thought about our thermal control layer a lot. That's why we had this white foam back behind me. This is Zip R3 on the outer side of this wall. And as far as I was concerned, I thought it would be a good idea to put the Zip R3 here on the outside and then use an insulated garage door and we effectively created a nice thermal envelope on the secondary building envelope, right? Though this garage space is not air conditioned. Now, the interior walls of the garage, which are actually part of the true building envelope, meaning what is wrapping the condition space, these I opted not to do the Zip R3 because it was more expensive, so I just did the regular old 7 16 inch Zip, which qualifies as a shear wall, right? Uh, and can provide shear strength. And all these walls behind me were called out by our structural, engin structural engineer to actually be shear walls, right? And they are. And so we needed to put either a half inch plywood or this half inch zip on top of them. And so we opted for the zip. We saved the money on the zip R. Um, the zip was like a dollar more per sheet than the plywood would have been. And the reason why I wanted to go with the zip is because here on in the inside of this home, we're not really worried about thermal control as much on the inside of the garage uh, because we got that secondary thermal control layer on that secondary building envelope on the outside of the garage. But what we're really, and we're not really worried about water too much either, right? Because we're, we're over cover. And so water shouldn't really be an issue. But what we are worried about is air, our air control layer. And so we wanted a very easy way to accomplish a good air control layer without doing a, having to do a lot of work. And we wanted to get to all this before the electricians and any plumbers or anybody came through. And we wanted to block everything all the way to the ceiling line, as we've done. And then we're going to caulk around any of these joists in a way that's nice and easy and uh, efficient. And then all the rest of the seams, we're just going to use straight up zip tape because that's faster and easier for us here in this particular situation. We're just going to zip tape everything. And then we will have a very effective air control layer uh, that will prevent carbon monoxide from seeping inside our home if there's ever any negative pressure. Uh, the door will also have weather stripping and that will aid in this as well. Now, let's talk this duct real quick. So this duct is currently sitting outside of our true building envelope, right? And guys, that's a problem. Even though this is a secondary building envelope, we don't ever, as a best practice, want to put ductwork outside of our true building envelope, meaning our conditioned building envelope. And so what we've opted to do here is something a little bit creative where we needed to get this duct out here. It really aided us in uh, making this HVAC more efficient, having less turns, and just uh, having less ductwork in general and just being in a better strategic position for the home in terms of long-term durability and efficiency of this HVAC install. But we, we're stuck with putting this duct in the garage space outside of our true building envelope. So what we've actually decided to do is we are, we are going and wrapping the HVAC duct with a fur down, right? It's garage, so fur down wasn't really a big deal here. Uh, we ended up dropping this door to do so. This door was originally gonna be an eight foot door. Now it's gonna be a seven foot door. And we are effectively going to extend our true building envelope around this HVAC duct. So there's going to be a frame right here, and then we're going to bring sheathing up in front of this truss right here. And that is going to block it, and then we will caulk it, and we'll seal any remaining seams with zip tape. And that will become an air barrier, right, and uh, an air control layer, and it will also be part of our true building envelope. And then we'll come in from the other side here and we'll put blown in insulation all around this thing. And this duct will be completely insulated. And that's how we're gonna bring this duct into our true building envelope, maintain good continuity of our building envelope and uh, ensure that we don't have any carbon monoxide seep into our home. So we're covering lots of bases there. Thermal control layer, 
air control layer, water control layer, and then inside here we're really focused on our air control layer and definitely a little bit of thermal too. So uh, that's the some, some 411 on building envelope and how we're handling it in this garage space. And I know it's a lot to think about, but uh, scratch your head a little bit and ponder all that. And hopefully that helps you out on your next build. Adios amigos.